everyone. This lecture video is all about Pearson R correlation coefficient or just Pearson R. So first we have here the correlation. It is used to determine if there are relationship between two or more variables. I'll give you three examples of correlation or relationship that may affect each other. First, environment and academic performance. Second, self-confidence and exam scores. Then academic achievement and employment is the relationship between the academic achievement and employment of the learners so those are the examples of correlation that is being subjected in several studies under the pearson's r then the pearson r is a statistical treatment used to determine correlation it also determines the strength and direction of correlation then we have here the direction of relationship from the word ship it tells whether the relation has a destination there are three positive negative and no relationship first for positive when x variable increases, the y variable also increases. So, for example, the more people outside, the higher is the risk of COVID transmission. That is an example. And then second, negative correlation. When x variable increases, y variable decreases. For example, when many people get vaccinated, there will be less COVID transmission. Then there is also a relationship with no correlation at all. And this is when the x variable and y variable has no correlation. Example, the mother dog giving birth to a kitten. So that is a different story. It doesn't add up to each other. Okay, those are the examples. Next, we have here the strength of relationship. So we have here the negative magnitudes representing a negative correlation being the one having the perfect negative correlation and if it's in zero zero no correlation at all and then we also have here the positive magnitude with having the one positive one as perfect correlation and point ten as a weak positive correlation the signs here exhibits the strength of the relationship whether it is negative no correlation or positive correlation so let us apply the correlation or the patients are to some problems that we may encounter in research laboratory and in several case studies. Here, for this example, I will be doing a chemical analysis in the laboratory between an experiment. So the problem is, is there a significant correlation between the catalyst temperature and gas yield performed in an 8-trial pyrolysis experiment? So I'll be applying the Pearson's R to determine the correlation in the laboratory between the catalyst temperature as X variable and the gas yield as the Y variable. So I have here, first, after you state the problem, next you have to state the hypothesis. We have here the null hypothesis represented by HO. There is no significant correlation between the X and Y variable. Then for HA or alternative hypothesis, there is a significant correlation between the X and Y variable. Then since the problem is all about the 8 trial pyrolysis, meaning to say we have here the population of 8 conducted the data from the 8 trial experiment in the catalyst. So, it is in degrees Celsius in temperature. This is our variable X. And for our variable Y, which is the gas yield, performed in the 8 trial population, our experiment represented in milliliter, ml. The first thing that we need to do, first step, is to compute the total of the X variable and Y variable separately. So, this column is X variable, 8 trial, and this column is Y variable. Okay, so we have to first get the sum. So you just have to add that and that is represented by summation of x that is 161.1 for y adding that up that is represented by summation of y that is 188.4. The second step is compute the mean of x and y variable. So this is the table for x again and for y and to compute the mean represented by x bar you just have to divide this into the number of population which is 8 based on the number of trial 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 161.1 divided by 8 that is 20.1 for the mean of x. Then for y you have just have to divide the 188.4 into 8 as well based on this number of trials. So the mean of y is 23.6 dividing that into 8. And then the third step is to compute the deviation from the mean of x and y variable. So this is what you need to do. You just have to subtract each trial from x and y variable into their means, respective means. So for example, 18.2 minus 20.1, that will be negative 1.9. 24.2 minus 20.1, that will be 4.1. Then 31.2 minus 20.1, that will be 11.1. So you just have to do that for the deviations of the x. So this is now the deviation of the x from the mean. Now, for the deviation of y from the mean, y variable from the mean, you just have to do minus the trials in y, the data of milliliters, into the mean. So that is 21.2 minus 23.6, that will be negative 2.4. 28.0 minus 23, that will be 4.4. And then 13.9 minus 23.6, that will be negative 9. Still, you reach the 8th trial here. You just have to subtract that from the mean. Now, the fourth step is to multiply the deviations of x and y variable. So this is the deviation of x and y variable. And in this column, this 
will be their products. So, negative 1.9 multiplied to negative 2.4, that will be 4.6. Negative 3.8 multiplied to 1.7, that will be negative 6.5, and so on until the 8th trial. Then, for 5th step, you just have to add the products of the deviation here. Adding that up, that you will have here your SP or sum of products. If you add that, that is 408.4. Now, for 6th step, you just have to square the deviations of x and y variables. So, this is for the square of the deviation of x. Then this is the square of the deviation of y. So negative 1.9 squared, that will be 3.6. 4.1 squared, that will be 16.8. Negative 4.7, that will be 22.1 if you square that until the 8th trial here. Then for our deviation of the y, you just have to square that. Negative 2.4 squared, that will be 5.8. Then negative 8.0, that will be 64 if you square that. 8.5 squared, that will be 72.3. So the next thing that you need to do is for step uh, 7, you just have to add the square of the deviations of the x and y variable. Then here you just have to add the square of the deviations of x and y. You have here the sum of the deviations of x. If you add that up, that is 313.9. Then you have here the sum of the deviations of the y. If you add that up, that will be 612.0. Now for step 8, you just have to calculate the value of the r. So this is the formula that we will be using. Then to simplify, that is r equals sum of the products over the square root of the sum of the squares of x multiplied to the sum of the squares of y deviations. And then substitute, the sp is 408.4, this one. And then over square root, then the ssx or the sum of the squares of the deviations of the x is 313.9 here. Then the ssy or the sum of the squares of the deviation of the y is 612. You just have to put that here. Then the next thing that you need to do is multiply that you will have this value. Then, to get the square root of this, you will have 438.3. Then, divide that. You will have the R value of 0 0.93178. Then, for step 9, you have to determine the critical value. To determine the critical value, this is the formula. First, you need to get the degrees of freedom, which is the formula is n minus 2. n is the population. And here, it is based on the number of trials, which is 8. 8 minus 2, that will be 6. Then our study will have a 0 0.05 significance level represented by alpha. And then to get the critical value, you just need the degrees of freedom and the alpha level. So you have to plot that here on the chart. So here is your 0 0.05. This one. And then the degrees of freedom represented by df is 6. So you just have to meet that. This is, is. Okay. And then for 0 0.05. Okay. Then the critical value is 0 0.7067, which is this one, 0 0.7067. Next step is step 10. We have to compare the computed R value and the critical R value, but first we need to establish the rule. So the rule for Pearson's R is that if the computed R value is greater than the critical value, you have to reject the null hypothesis. So for step 10, the comparing the computed R value to critical R value, you have here first... The computed R value is 0 0.93178 based here. This is the computed R value. And then the critical value is based here. This one. So that is 0 0.7067. So as you can see here, the computed R value is greater than the critical R value. So we have to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, the conclusion is there is a significant correlation between the catalyst temperature and gas yield in the 8th trial pyrolysis experiment. So that is all for Pearson R correlation and the tutorial. Thanks.